Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well, we have a great one for you today. We've got this animated background image for you there. It's kind of growing. It's almost looking like we're traveling through space there. I've got it happening over a long period of time. I think a minute and a half or something like that. And once it gets to the end there, it'll actually reverse and go the other way. And that's a great little thing. As you can see, the actual text and the button on top of it is not being affected at all. It's just the background image there that's scaling up. Really easy to do, and that's a really nice effect to have on your website. We did this last year, I think, with a panoramic type picture. But somebody was asking about it recently, so we're going to do it again. Let's enable the visual builder, and we'll get started. Okay, here's my initial section right here. I'm going to go down, I'm going to add a new section, a little blue button to add a new section. I'm using a regular section there. Inside, I'm going to put a single row, single column. Inside that, the first thing I'm going to use is an actual image. Go down. And before I put the image in, let's get rid of this one at the top so we don't get confused. Okay, so we've got a section here, the blue tab. Inside the section, I've got a row, the green tab, with one single column in there. We've got an image module inside. Let's select the image that we want as the background now. I'll use the same one as I used before, it's fairly effective. That's great. While I'm in here though, if I roll over, it's got a crazy number and thing up there. That's actually the name of the image. If you don't want that to happen when they roll over the background, Go over to your advanced, we're still in the image here. Down to attributes. There's your image title text right there. You can get rid of it or change it to something that you want if you do want it up there. I'm going to just delete mine. Then when I pop my mouse over, it's not going to pop up. Great. Well, let's save that. We really now want to make this full width. So to do that, I'm going to go into the green tab, the row. We, we could have used a full width section, but because of what I'm going to add in a minute, this works better doing it this way, but it's entirely up to you. I'm going to go into there. There's the row, green tab, design, sizing, width. I'm going to slide that all the way up to this 100%. I'm going to copy the 100%, control C. I'm going to paste it in the max width below, control V, or you can just type it in there if you prefer. There we go. We've got a nice full width row with our nice image in there. I don't want to take any space away, top and bottom, because I don't want those big white gaps there. So while we're in the row, let's close up sizing. We'll go to spacing, padding, top and bottom. Let's put a zero in there. Just put in the zero. It'll put in the picks. Hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side. We've still got some there. That's obviously on our section. So let's close up the row now. We'll go into the blue tab for the section and do exactly the same thing. Designs always where you find spacing. Go in, put a zero in. That's the top taken care of. Hit the chain. Fantastic. We're butted against, butted up against the section below, and our nav bar at the top there. Fantastic. Great. Well, we're going to want to add a caption or something over the top of this because it's kind of our hero section. Usually, you'd have a little call to action button, or at least something introducing your site here. So let's do that. Really easy to do. I'm going to hit the green button. We'll add a new row for this. Again, I'm going to use a single column in mine. You can use what you want in yours. Well, I'm going to use a call to action because it's got a button. Like I say, you use whatever modules you want and you can combine several modules together if you want to. I'm going to keep it fairly simple. I'm going to pop in a call to action. If I roll down, there it is right there. I want a button in there with the call to action. The button doesn't show up until you put a link for it in there. I'll do that in a second. When it opens, you're at the content level, put in your title here. Put what you want your button to say there. And obviously put your content in down here. I'm going to leave that just as it is. What I was saying before about the button, that button's not going to turn up until you put a link in it down below here. Click on where it says link there. You can have the button link one place. And you can link the module another place or the same place if you want to. And that'll take anywhere they click on the module, that'll take them to that link. 
anywhere they click on the button will take them to this link. Okay, so there's no button there. As soon as I put a link in, I'm going to use a hashtag as a placeholder. That buttons are going to show up there. Fantastic. All right, as this is a bit hero -y, I'm going to make that title a lot bigger. I'm going to take the background away from our button and just have a border and the writing itself. Quickest way to the title is the little paintbrush right there. Take us straight to it. I'm going to make mine capital. I'm going to make it bold. And I'm going to make it a lot bigger title text size. That's great. And for the button, still in design. We close up our title text now. We can do the same thing, just hit the paintbrush. It'll take us straight to the button. Mine's purple and blue. That's where I've got it set up in my customizer. But you can do anything you want with this button by turning the custom styles on, left clicking on there till it says yes. So text size is fine, button text color is fine. Background, I want to take the background away completely. I'm just going to hit transparent there. But I do want a bit of a border, a couple pixels. I'm going to make it two pixels and you can change the color right here. We've got white there. That works perfectly for me. Okay. I'm actually going to take the background away now. Well, in fact, I'll leave it there so you can see what's going to happen next. Once I take the background and you're not going to see that writing because it's white on white, but we want this to be right up in the middle of our section here. So to do that, just say this. We need to go back into the row, the green tab. Make sure you get out of the module. You could do it with a module, but it's going to work better if we do it with a row here. So we're going to the green tab for the row. Going to go over to advanced. Going to go down to position. I'm going to change it from relative to absolute. That way we can position it wherever we want within its parent container. Now the parent container of the row is the section. So anywhere within our section, which is right here. Now you might notice it's up at the top left. We've got a little matrix here or a grid. I want mine smack in the middle there. So I'm going to pop that there. Now you may have noticed that it's disappeared. That's because the Z index on it is a bit low. Z index determines what elements are placed on top of other elements. For instance, an element with a Z index of 10 will always be in front of an element with a Z index of nine or lower. So if I slide this up, it should pop on top. There we go. Fantastic. So we've got it where we, where we want it. I need to take that background there. Now this section, I want it to be sort of full screen, almost full screen. We've got to take into account our little menu bars up here. So we'll do that in a moment. Let's save our row settings here. I'm going to take the background away from this thing there. So I'm going to go in there. Module. Always find background under content. There it is down the bottom. Let's just trash that. Fantastic. So we've got that over our little background image now. Okay. Let's save this. I want to shrink this up, like I say, so it's not quite as deep as that. I want it to cover most of our screen, if not all of it. So to do that, let's go into my section here, the blue tab. I'm going to go to design. That's always where you find sizing. I'm going to give it a height of 100 VH for viewable height. So any screen that they view it on, it will be 100% of the screen height. Now I've got a little bit hanging over the bottom there. Like I say, we've got to take into account our menu bars here. I'm going to take mine down to maybe 90 and you can adjust it for tablet and mobile too. get exactly what you want. That works. That's more central to me for what we've got here. Great. Okay. Because we're going to be making this image a lot bigger, it's going to be zooming in like we're going through space a bit. It's going to spill out of our section here. Now Google and things like that don't like it. If you've got things that are bigger than your page. So, it's important that we go over to advanced. We're in our settings and we're going to do the same thing for our row in a minute. I'm going to go down to visibility. Any overflow, I'm going to change it from default to hidden. That way it won't fall outside of our page here. Well, it will, but you won't see it and Google won't dislike it. Right. So we've done that. Great. Let's go back into our row now and do exactly the same thing because I'm going to make this image expand in a moment. So I'm going to go into my 
row and do exactly the same thing. Over to advanced, visibility, horizontal, vertical overflow, changes to hidden. And save our changes. Now we can go into the actual module itself. Got to be a bit careful because we've got the image, which is the one I want to go into. And we've got our call to action right here. I want to make sure we go into the image. There we are. Okay, let's go over to our advanced now. I'm going to write a little bit of code. And don't let that panic you. Any code I write here will be down below the video if you need to just copy and paste. We're going to use their new freeform CSS tab, which lets you make write more complex CSS right in the module itself. Now remember, this is our image. So let's write a bit of code. We're on the freeform CSS tab. First thing I want to do is, is invent a class name to make this work. Now a class name can be anything you want. It wants to be unique. All class names have a dot or a period in front of them. And then the name that you want. I'm going to call mine SC image for scaling image. Mine kind of my shorthand for scaling image. I'm going to open and close some curly brackets. And we need to tell it what we want this skip SC image to do. Well, I want it to run an animation that I'm going to write in a minute. So I'm going to say animate, colon. We'll give the animation a unique name. I'm going to call this one ZM image for zoom image. And again, that wants to be unique. And that's the name of our animation. I'm going to have mine running for 100 seconds. 100S, which is just over a minute and a half. And I want it to reoccur and reoccur. So I want it infinite. And I want it to be very smooth, so I'm going to say linear. Great. Let's put a semicolon on the back. Okay. Now I need to create this animation that we called Z image there, or ZM image. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to drop down below our little curly bracket there. We're using keyframes to build this today, so I'm going to say add keyframes. And then the name, which is ZM image, which I just copied there. Now we can open and close some more curly brackets and decide how we want to actually animate it. So at 0%, 0, 0% open some more curly brackets. 0% means when the page loads or second one of our 100 seconds there, I want mine to sort of scale up. So I'm going to say transform, colon, scale, right at the end of scale with no gap, round brackets, and we can scale it up or down as much as we want. I want it to start off at regular size, so that would be 1 or 100%. Let's copy this. I'm going to drop down after our first curly bracket there. Make sure you've got one on the end there, which encapsulates the whole of this animation from there to here. I'm going to paste what we've done there. I'm going to drop down one more time and do exactly the same thing. So we've got three exactly the same. I'm going to say at 50% or 50 second mark, I'm going to scale it up to twice the size. So I'm going to change that one to a two. And then I want it to scale back down to regular size again at 100% or well, at the 100 second mark. That's where I want it to be back to regular size so it can start off the cycle again. Great. Well, you may have noticed absolutely nothing's happening. Well, the reason nothing's happening is we haven't given this image or the background image this class name. So we need this class name without the dot this time. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to close up the custom CSS, still in the advanced tab, just above there, you'll see CSS IDs and classes. Let's give that image the class name we just copied. And you may have noticed that background started to animate there. Which is just exactly what we want. And that's very, very smooth. I apologize if it looks a bit glitchy. That will be down to my screen recording software. But that's a really, really smooth transition there. And if I go back to my custom CSS, if you want to speed it up, you can take this number here. If you want it to be quicker, make it a smaller number. So if I say 50 seconds, it'll start traveling at a small speed, or a quicker speed, I should say. And if you make it more, say 150 seconds, it'll do it at a slower rate. And I think the slower rate it's kind of nice. It's almost like a Ken Burns type effect, really. But that's nice. Put it how you want it there. 
I'm going to change mine back to 100. And of course, if you want it to scale up more or less when it gets to the middle, we can change that to, to a three if you want. And then it's just going to get bigger when it ends or halfway through. Wouldn't take it down below one because if you do that, you're going to have white space around there. So let's change that back to two and I think I'm fairly happy with that. Let's save our changes. Make sure that this is going to work on the front end there. In the back end, occasionally you're going to see a bit of overspill like this, where it's going over the one. That's our overflow that we've hidden. So on the front end, we should not see any overflow here. Because if I put my mouse on it, you can see that module actually growing there. You will not be able to see that on the front end. So let's make sure of that. Let's hit the little purple button. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And there we have it. There's our little animated background right there. As you can see, the background image is growing or scaling, giving it that impression of going through space a little bit. And our writing and our button are staying just as they were, which is just what we wanted. And if we go down below, there's no overspill. We go straight into that section below there. So there you go, guys. There's how to create a full width animated background image for your hero section. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget that code's down below the video for anybody that just wants to copy and paste. And you can apply that to any module you want. So once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Day.